Hello everyone and welcome to QuickSafe TV. I'm really excited to have you here today because today we're gonna read the history, brief history of the Empire Part 1. As you can see it's my new character, another one, it's a Hajit called Shaik, and Shaik today will read for us the book. I have been practicing the impersonation of a Hajit, but it seems that I will lose my vocal cords if I keep doing the same things. So I'm just gonna start with it and I'm just gonna end with this. <laughs> So, yeah, let's try, let's try. <coughs> A Brief History of the Empire, Part 1 Before the rule of Tiber Septim, all of Tamriel was in chaos. The poet Trasidzis called this period of continuous unrest days and nights of blood and venom. The kings were a petty lot of grasping tyrants who fought Tiber's attempts to bring order to the land but they were as disorganized as they were dissolute, and the strong hand of Septim brought peace forcibly to Tamriel. The year was 896 of the Second Era. The following year the Emperor declared of the beginning of a new era. Thus began the Third Era, Year Ot. For 38 years the Emperor Tiber reigned supreme. It was a lawful, pious and glorious age, when justice was known to one and all, from serf to sovereign. On Tiber's death it reigned for an entire fortnight, as if the land of Tamriel itself was weeping. The Emperor's grandson Pelagius came to the throne. Though his reign was short, he was as strong and resolute as his father had been and Tamriel could have enjoyed a continuation of the Golden Age. Alas, an unknown enemy of the Septim family hired that accursed organization of cutthroats, the Dark Brotherhood, to kill the Emperor Pelagius first as he knelt at prayer at the Temple of the One in the Imperial City. Pelagius I's reign lasted less than three years. Pelagius had no living children, so the Crown Imperial passed to his first cousin the daughter of Tiber's brother, Agnorith. Kintira, former queen of Sylvanar, assumed the throne as Kintira I. Her reign was blessed with prosperity and good harvests, and she herself was an avid patroness of art, music, and dance. Kintira's son was crowned after her death, and the first emperor of Tamriel to use the imperial name Uriel. Uriel I was the great lawmaker of the Septim dynasty and the promoter of independent organizations and guilds. Under his kind but firm hand, the Fighters Guild and the Mages Guild increased in prominence throughout Tamriel. His son and successor, Uriel II, reigned for 18 years from the death of Uriel I in 64 to Pelagius II's ascension in 82. Tragically, the rule of Uriel the second was cursed with blights, plagues and insurrections. The tenderness he inherited from his father did not serve Tamriel well, and little justice was done. Pelagius II inherited not only the throne from his father, but the depth from the latter's poor financial and judicial management. Pelagius dismissed all of the other's counsel and allowed only those willing to pay great sums to resume their seats. He encouraged similar acts among his vassals, the kings of Tamriel, and by the end of his 17th year reign, Tamriel had returned to prosperity. His critics, however, have suggested that any advisor possessed of wisdom, but not gold, of had been summarily oosted by Pelagius. This may have led to some of the troubles his son Antiochus faced when he in turn became the emperor. Antiochus was certainly one of the more flamboyant members of this usually austere Septim family. He had numerous mistresses and nearly as many wives, and was renowned for the grandeur of his dress and his high good humor. Unfortunately, his reign was rife with civil war, surpassing even that of his grandfather's Uriel II. The War of the Isle in the age 110, 12 years after Antiochus assumed the throne, nearly took the province of Somerset Isle away from Tamriel. 
the united alliance of the kings of Somerset and Antiochus only managed to defeat King Orgrum of the island kingdom of Pendenea due to the freak storm. Legend credits the Psygic Order of the Isle of Arteum with the sorcery behind the Tempest. The story of Kintira II, heiress to her father Antiochus' throne, is certainly one of the saddest tales in the imperial history. Her first cousin Uriel, son of Queen Potema of Solitude, accused Kintira of being a bastard, alluding to the infamous decadence of the imperial city during her father's reign. When this accusation failed to stop her coronation, Uriel bought the, superior, bought the su support of s several disgruntled kings of High Rock, Skyrim and Morrowind. With Queen Podima's assistance, he coordinated three attacks on the Septim Empire. The first attack occurred in the Iliac Bay region, which separates High Rock and Hammerfell. Kintira and Toraj was massacred and the Empress taken captive. For two years, Kintira II languished in an imperial prison, believed to be somewhere in Glen Point or Glen Morial, before she was slain in her cell under mysterious circumstances. The second attack was on a series of imperial garrisons along the coastal Morrowind Islands. The Empress consort, Conti Tharynx, fell defending the forts. The, the third and final attack was a siege of the imperial city itself. Occurring after the Elder Council has split up the army to attack Western High Rock and Eastern Morrowind. The weakened government had little defense against Uriel's determined aggression and capitulated after only a fortnight of resistance. Uriel took the throne that same evening and proclaimed himself Uriel III, the Emperor of Tamriel. The year was 121st. Thus began the War of the Red Diamond, described in the volume 2 of this series. Oh, I think I just lost my vocal cords, but I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed the commentary. This is just the, uh, how should I put it, an experimental version. I was trying to impersonate the Khajiit voice. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, enjoyed the commentary, go ahead, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and favorite, because all of these things help me immensely, and I just love your support. Plus, I would like to propose something like this. If you're actually watching this video until the end, and you're right now listening to me, then go ahead and leave a comment on whether or not you liked it, whether or not you, you, you enjoyed this style of commentary, uh, this, this style of book reading. I don't know what sounds better, what is more interesting for you. Perhaps this, you know, the accent was more interesting, like this, more profound like this, and maybe you like it more or maybe you like it less. So go ahead, leave a comment whether you like this style of reading, with a sort of like Khajiit voice. I wouldn't say I have a Khajiit voice, so. <laughs> or you like the original more. And, and, go ahead, like the video if you would like to see more of Skyrim lore. If we gather 10 likes on this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a new Skyrim lore series, a new Skyrim lore video. Very simple. So if you like it, I'm gonna make more of it. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much for watching. It was a great pleasure having you here. Have a great day and May your road always leads you to warm sands.